April is National Poetry Month, and although I love to read poetry all year long, if you haven't been doing that, April's a great time to get started. I'm going to share a couple of novels and verse with you, uh, along with some poetry activities that you can use to engage further with the novels and verse. The first one is Jason Reynolds' Long Way Down. In Long Way Down, Will discovers his older brother has been gunned down and killed in the neighborhood. Now in their neighborhood, there are three rules. No crying, no snitching, do get revenge. Now Will grew up with these rules and he thinks he knows what he needs to do. So he goes into Sean's bedroom, finds his gun in an old drawer, puts it in the back of his pants, and steps onto the elevator on the seventh floor. The entire book takes place in 60 seconds. So as the elevator is descending and stops at each floor, people or ghosts, if you will, from Will's past step onto the elevator and share stories with him. As he gets down to the bottom floor at the end of that 60 seconds, the long way down, the elevator door opens and he sees his brother Sean standing there. And Sean says, you coming? And the book ends. So readers don't really know exactly what happened. But it's a great opportunity to have kids think critically and invent their own endings to this story. So I, I made a very free verse, open-ended style of 60-second poetry. And basically, because Long Way Down takes place over the course of 60 seconds, I tell the kids you have 60 seconds to write an ending to this book. What do you think happened when Sean said, you coming? What happened? And so most phones today have a timer on them, or you can look at a clock in the classroom if you need. Um, and they have one minute to write down an alternate ending to Long Way Down. So I run that for 60 seconds, stop, and then I say, okay, flip over your paper. We're going to do that again. Now write a different ending. Clock 60 seconds again. Okay. Now, you can do this as many times as you want. Some folks like to do it seven times, once for each floor as the elevator goes down. Um, I like to have students volunteer to share their end of their stories when they're done. And uh, they're usually some very deep and creative things that they come up with. The next novel and verse I'm going to talk about is Two Girls Staring at the Ceiling by Lucy Frank. This is a very unique book because of its format. Uh, the book features two young girls who are sharing a hospital room. They both have an autoimmune disease, but they are having kind of opposite experiences as they're going through their hospitalizations. In their room, they start talking to each other a little bit, but the whole time they're talking, there is a curtain down the middle of the room between their two beds that divides them as they're talking. In the book, the on the page, there is a physical line drawn down between the dialogue of the two girls, which obviously is a metaphor for that curtain that goes down between them in the room. So I started thinking, hmm, what would be a great poetry activity to pair with this? And I thought about the exquisite corpse format. Exquisite corpse is an old parlor game that is from the 1920s during the Paris Surrealist movement. And it was a game that was played when people would pass around a, people, 
piece of paper and each add a line or a word to create a poem together. Has nothing to do at all with an actual corpse. Uh, it's got its name kind of in a funny way. It got the name Exquisite Corpse from a, a poem that came about as people were passing around their paper and it had the line Exquisite Corpse in it. So that's how it's got its name, which obviously is kind of fun for teens. Um, when you do this, take a sheet of paper and the first person will write their word on the first line. They'll fold it over like this, pass it to the next person, and that person will write their word on the second line, word two. Make sure you're writing the word here, not up here, otherwise it won't make sense when you unfold it all. So you'll just keep folding over, adding a new word, adding a new word. Uh, I strongly suggest keeping a format grammatically, otherwise it's not going to make any sense at all. It might not make sense at all anyway. The The fun of it is that they they end up kind of absurd. Um, but a structure you could agree upon might be something like adjective, noun, verb, adjective, noun. And as it keeps getting passed around, you can keep adding to that. I'm going to share a couple that came up uh, when I was doing a presentation about this. The first one is sophisticated boon, skips pickled soccer player. <laughs> I told you a lot of times they're pretty absurd. <laughs> this one I thought was really funny. Cruel bookmark slips blushing cats among the slippery phone. So as you can see, kids would have a lot of fun with this, and it doesn't feel like a strict format poetry. I think sometimes kids have a misconception that poetry has to be a very rigid form, which there is some poetry that is in a more structured form, but there are also forms of poetry that can take all kinds of different directions. And that's a great place to start with kids who are new to poetry, or maybe are like, you know, oh, I can't write poetry. It's a great way to start doing these fun kind of activities like that. I hope you'll give them a try.